In today's video, I discuss the 14 main signs and symptoms that may indicate that you are magnesium deficient. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acids, stool tests and consults via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in your body and magnesium deficiency is a fairly common occurrence and depending on the study and country in question, rates vary from 30 to 60% in terms of deficiency. Now the reason that this is such a big deal is that this mineral is responsible for over 300 different biochemical reactions in your body and is directly involved in a number of different body processes such as blood pressure, immunological function and also cellular function to name a few. So the high rates of magnesium deficiency occur for a number of simple reasons. Firstly, because of Western junk food type diets, people are consuming less magnesium rich foods. In conjunction to this, there is also the issue of depleted soils in certain countries around the world. In water supplies, the use of chemicals such as fluoride and chlorine also render magnesium inaccessible to the body as these types of chemicals bind to magnesium. In addition to these external factors, usually out of our control, individual choices could also leave us susceptible to magnesium deficiency. So high intakes of caffeine and sugar will deplete your magnesium levels very quickly. Other common risk factors for magnesium deficiencies include you are consuming too many processed refined sugars, you take a calcium supplement, you have a digestive disorder such as colitis or Crohn's, you don't consume enough leafy green vegetables or you have a gut infection such as SIBO. So with those out the way let's discuss the common symptoms associated with magnesium deficiency. So number one is heart disease. If you have calcification of the arteries then it is often a sign of magnesium deficiency. In a study published in Nutrition, Metabolism and Cardiovascular Diseases researchers analysed 34,553 participants who underwent coronary multi-detector computed tomography and serum magnesium level measurement from 2010 to 2012 as part of a health examination programme. According to the analysis, low serum magnesium was associated with coronary artery calcification after adjustment for age, sex, BMI, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, systolic blood pressure, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, serum, calcium and phosphorus, alcohol intake and vigorous exercise frequency. The ability of magnesium to prevent calcification in the arteries is why larger health studies such as the Framingham Health Study found that consuming enough magnesium are correlated to a lower risk of coronary heart disease. Number two is mineral deficiency. So if you are deficient in magnesium, then it often goes hand in hand with other mineral deficiencies. So if magnesium is low in the body, then it can make it very difficult for other minerals to be absorbed and utilized correctly. So nutrients such as calcium, potassium, potassium, vitamin K and also vitamin D. Number three, a very common symptom associated with magnesium deficiency is muscle spasms and cramps. And this is because magnesium plays a role in regulating muscle contractions. So in your muscles, calcium binds to proteins such as troponin C and myosin, and this whole process changes the shape of these proteins, which generates a contraction. And obviously magnesium competes with calcium for the same binding spots to help relax your muscles. So if your body doesn't have enough magnesium to compete with the calcium, your muscles may contract too much, causing cramps or spasms. Number four is poor bone health. Now, everyone assumes that calcium is the most important mineral for bone health, but the reality of it is that magnesium is equally as important. And this makes absolute logical sense as magnesium is necessary to convert vitamin D into its active form so that it can turn on calcium absorption, which is pivotal for bone health. It also turns out that all of the enzymes metabolizing vitamin D require magnesium as a necessary cofactor. And this is why many people are deficient in vitamin D despite taking very high doses. 
When you take high doses of vitamin D and you are already low in magnesium, the increased amount of metabolic work drains magnesium from its muscle storage sites. And that's probably why muscles are the first to suffer magnesium deficiency symptoms, such as twitching, leg cramps, and also restless legs. So number five is high blood pressure and hypertension. So blood pressure is the force of blood moving around your body, pushing against the walls of your blood vessels. So high blood pressure means that your blood pressure is higher than your recommended levels, putting extra strain on your heart and blood vessels and increasing your risk of heart attacks and strokes. So magnesium will help reduce blood pressure by helping the body release prostacycline, a hormone-like compound that reduces tension in blood vessel walls. So number six is fatigue issues. So magnesium in the body creates energy by activating adenosine triphosphate, which is the fundamental unit of energy within your body's cells. Without proper levels of magnesium, the nutrients that you take in through your food and supplements would not be metabolized into energy. So number seven is hormonal issues. So magnesium plays a pivotal role in hormone balance in your body. So for example, in cortisol regulation, magnesium calms your nervous system and prevents the creation of excess cortisol, which is one of your main stress hormones. So when your stress hormonal system is in balance, your levels of progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, FSH and LH will also be too. So magnesium also helps blood sugar balance. So magnesium helps to control insulin production and reduces sugar cravings and as such prevents blood sugar spikes. And this is vital when it comes to healing hormonal issues like PCOS. Also, not many people realize that magnesium actually helps make the hormones progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. So if you're getting into perimenopause or just off the pill and your levels are really low, then it's a great help to your body. Number eight is anxiety and depression issues. So there are a number of ways in which magnesium can help reduce anxiety and depression. So magnesium increases increases relaxing GABA, so one way magnesium counters stress is by binding to and stimulating GABA receptors in your brain. Also magnesium reduces stress hormones, so excess cortisol contributes to anxiety, brain fog, depression, mood swings, memory loss, dementia, concentration problems, insomnia, and also mental disorders of all kinds. So obviously magnesium restricts the release of stress hormones and acts as a filter to prevent them from entering your brain. Another area that magnesium will help with reducing anxiety and depression is that magnesium acts as an anti-inflammatory in the body. Inflammatory immune system messengers called cytokines activate inflammation in the brain, destroy brain tissue and also brain function, so magnesium helps reduce these inflammatory responses. So cytokines play a role in anxiety, depression, memory loss, apathy, slowed responses, irritability, inability to focus, schizophrenia, bipolar disorders and increased risk of suicide. So number nine is sleep problems. So in order to fall asleep and stay asleep, your body and brain need to relax. On a chemical level, magnesium aids this process by activating your parasympathetic nervous system. So the system that is responsible for getting you calm and relaxed. So first, magnesium regulates neurotransmitters, which sends signals through to the nervous system and your brain. It also regulates the hormone melatonin, which guides the sleep-wake cycles in your body. Secondly, magnesium binds to your GABA receptors. So GABA is the neurotransmitter responsible for quieting down the nerve activity in your body. And it's the same neurotransmitter used by sleep drugs like Ambien. Number 10 is digestive issues. So muscles within the digestive tract, including the intestinal wall, are relaxed by magnesium, which improves digestion as well as counterbalancing stomach acid and advances stool through the intestines. So obviously low levels of magnesium can have the opposite effect and cause all manner of digestive issues. Number 11 is PMS problems. So if you have sufficient amounts of magnesium in the body, then it helps to prevent menstrual cramps in women. It works by relaxing in the smooth muscle of the uterus and by reducing the prostaglandins that cause the period pain in the first place. Number 12 is heart irregularities. So just as it helps with nerve function throughout the body, magnesium is important for coordinating the activity of the heart muscle and also the nerves that initiate the heartbeat. If your magnesium levels are low, you are more likely to be at risk for arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats or even heart palpitations. So number 13 is migraines and headaches. So there are a number of known causes of migraines and headaches in the body. So 
low levels of magnesium can promote cortical spreading depression. It can alter nonoceptive processing and neurotransmitter release and encourage the hyper aggregation of platelets all of which are major elements of migraine development. So number 14 is electrolyte deficiency. So magnesium maintains a balance of other electrolytes in the body, such as sodium, potassium, and calcium. These electrolytes in turn support nerve conduction, muscle contraction, and maintain normal heart rhythms. Now, before I finish, I will just explain how much you need and what are the best sources of it. So if you're between 19 and 64 years old, then the RDA is approximately 300 milligram for men and 270 milligram for women. Some of the best foods around include green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruits such as figs, avocados and bananas, legumes, vegetables such as peas, broccoli, cabbage, green beans, artichokes, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, whole grain, brown rice and oats, dark chocolate, tofu, and also chlorella powder. In terms of magnesium supplements, it depends on what your issue is for what type of magnesium you take. So I would suggest magnesium malate for energy issues, magnesium 3 on 8 for brain issues, magnesium oxide for constipation issues, magnesium citrate for relaxation issues, magnesium chloride for better absorption, magnesium sulfate for muscle issues and magnesium glycinate for sleep issues. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and as always remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live and I'll see you next time.